Welcome back to J Dog Has a Truck. We are doing some very important works here. Very! Oh my gosh! If you're looking for a uh, instructional video for um, how to uh, restore a power wagon to Barrett Jackson standards, uh, sorry, this is not it. Uh, I'm just an old guy that likes to mess around with old trucks and uh, I have fun. Um, basically, uh, I started this project not knowing where it would end. Um, because I was kind of testing my skills to see uh, what I could do um, and um, um, if I if I do another one I will probably do it differently uh, disassemble everything from the very start and just start um, as close to nut and bolt restoration as possible but uh, that's not how I did this and um, but I think you'll enjoy it uh, in this video, um, I was hoping that uh, I would have the uh, restored gauges to put back in as part of this video. Didn't happen. They have not arrived yet. Uh, still out in California getting restored. Um, but uh, I took the time to go back and... Um, um, fix a few things. Uh, I had, uh, after driving all summer, I had developed some pretty bad oil leaks. So um, I figured I had to get that done um, before I went on any trips this summer. So um, that's a lot of this video. So enjoy. Okay, getting very close to paint. Um, I did on the edges use some of this uh, medium body seam sealing compound uh, on both sides because it was not smooth from the factory. So uh, let's try to make it a little bit smoother. How's that? So what do we think? It's not completely back together, but uh, I think the uh, finish is quite adequate for primer. So uh, I put a coat of um, clear flat on top of the primer so it'll give, give it a little extra durability. But uh, it's coming along. Okay, what you hear now, of course, is uh, the tree is being drained again, again. 
So our next project, uh, something I have been putting off, uh, oil leaks. Um, I have identified one, the um, oil pump. Uh, when it was running, I kept it wiped off and you could see the oil just oozing up out of there. There is um, essentially a rubber O-ring in there. That should be easy to change. The other issue is from the front of the engine, uh, which could either be um, the seal on the uh, end of the crankshaft or um, the gasket for the timing chain cover. Uh, neither of which is good. Um, so essentially, a lot of this crap is gonna have to come off again. Um, now I've got uh, the facilities I can do a lot of this stuff. Um, heck, I can pull the engine out if I wanted to. Um, but um, um, got to get enough out to where I can um, remove this engine mount, get to the timing chain cover, cover, and the seal on the snout, crankshaft snout. Um, so. Uh, here we go again, taking things apart. What's the difference between, this is the oil pump gasket, it's called, it's an O-ring. This is squished down, and this is not. So here's the plan with my $150 yard sale engine hoist. Uh, plan on lifting the engine inch or two, uh, just barely enough. I have to get this engine mount out. Um, there's an engine mount here, which I have the new one. Uh, and I bet I'll have to take the water pump out. Um, but uh, next, I got this out, uh, literally with no problem at all. Um, didn't have to use any PB blaster heat or anything. Um, I didn't have a socket that size, so I just used a uh, plumber's pipe wrench. And uh, like I said, it. It wasn't in there tight enough to, to matter. So, next. Well, thanks. thank goodness we have a Harbor Freight in town now. So, basically, I'm gonna use this. Um, all these do is just uh, not even sure it's the right size, but I've got several different choices. But uh, yeah, that's that's too small. But anyway, that on there. And look at here, one of those things that I've saved over the years. I made this. This is part of my 1947 Plymouth I had in high school. Uh, part of the brake master cylinder, but that'll go right in there. I have to trim it just a tad and it should just uh, pull this out just like that.
this is after put it in gear and put the parking brake on so I wouldn't be turning everything over and I can see it slowly slipping out of there I sprayed a little PB blaster in there oh yeah we are ah, so I have to clean that up I may need a speedy sleeve is it uh, definitely looks even some rust on there so all right make a few call phone calls and uh, we'll get that squared away. So for those who were interested, this is the old crank pulley. And you notice it's pretty worn there, some rust and crap. Um, this was the original seal. Um, which, yeah, there was, it wasn't really sealing very well. So that's the reason that, um, vintage power wagons have brand new ones. So that's why I put that in. Just enough to, a little, a little bit of a load off and watch this thing that's been there uh, maybe original I don't know man now big cleanup job well got the uh, timing chain cover off and according to the specs uh, there's supposed to be half inch play down here and we are within specs, so don't have to replace the timing chain. So another thing we need to do, we need to get this plate off, because there's a gasket between here. 
I have to take the cam timing gear off and chain and everything. Um, <clears throat> there is a way to line it up and um, there's two dots stamped in here but somebody has been kind enough to put a little paint dollop on there as well. So line them up and we should be able to get everything back together correctly. So when you're taking this off, there is one bolt comes in from behind. So you gotta drop the oil pan, which you probably need to anyway. Well, I'm no scientist, but um, I think that's probably the source of my oil leak. Um, that should be a dry gasket surface right there. And there's the bottom of it. And it looks pretty wet to me. So I'm gonna say that's the source of my leaking, or at least one good source of I'm it. I'm cleaning in kerosene. Uh, Probably because I have a lot of it. And number two, it does seem to attack the rust and help get any rust off as well. So, uh, yeah, I'll spare you uh, watching the cleaning process. Everybody has their own ideas about uh, using these original fiber gaskets, should you use RTV, should you not use something else. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to use some ultra black and because we have a couple of surfaces, mating surfaces, where it's a little uneven. So um, hopefully that will help seal it. And probably what I'll do is just around this bottom semicircle and up a little bit and uh, just a real thin coating and hopefully I'll never have to worry about this. Okay, got that plate on and uh, before we put the timing cover back on, um, hey, I mentioned a uh, the, the, uh, the pulley down here, maybe having to get a, a speedy sleeve. Actually, I'm getting a brand new one from Vintage Power Wagons. So I want to get that first. Um, the book mentions a centering tool. I'm thinking that basically it's going to self-center. Put the timing chain cover on with the bolts loose. And then get the pulley on. That should center it and then tighten up the bolts. But uh, waiting on that for now. Okay, <clears throat> rear main seal is so far still not leaking. I think any contamination in there is coming from the outside from down here. Uh, be a tiny bit there but to replace the rear main seal have to drop the transmission take the flywheel off blah 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 uh, I'm gonna pass for now um, if I get the help because it's definitely a two-man job uh, I may do that uh, down the road but not today so here's something important. <clears throat> Always make sure that uh, you identify your oil leaks. Uh, this is what happens when you over tighten your oil pan bolts. Um, probably hard to see, but yeah, it pulls up this portion so basically basically what you got to do is do a little body work
just a little body work, work to uh, get it to flatten out. So keep doing your body work. Uh, you can use something like this, uh, which I did. Also, I found a very good uh, thing to do, and it's, it's kind of hard to photograph it. Uh, lay it down on a piece of glass or a mirror and slip a piece of paper underneath. And there should be either no drag or very little um, or even drag. There, you know, you shouldn't be able to run across it and then just grab it somewhere. So um, keep working it until, uh, of course, you can look across it. You can use a straight edge like that, a mirror, uh, whatever you have to do, combination thereof. Uh, to get it as straight as you can without any dimples around the uh, bolt holes. Well, looky what we have here. A brand spanking new crankshaft pulley. Even with all the numbers on it, readable. Uh, let's get some paint on this. So some YouTube guy recommended that uh, Honda stuff, I put it between this steel and here. This is going to be a flat enough surface. I'll just uh, see if I can go straight and uh, let's start getting. getting some bolts in and uh, I spent time cleaning that real well with fine sandpaper alcohol and uh, should have a nice clean surface to adhere to Again, we will not tighten this up quite yet until I get the crankshaft pulley on. So, I heated this up on the top of my wood stove. It's a real lead hammer. I picked up at a yard sale ah, 30 years ago. Greta would be proud. Get it in, at least partially, then can use this with my high tick high tick tools and uh, that should draw it the wet rest of the way closed.
Okay, so this is where you end up. Uh, the crankshaft is a little bit under, uh, about an eighth of an inch under um, the pulley. And the pulley extends a little bit. Um, that should be correct, and as long as your pulley pulleys line up, should be good to go. Well, honesty alert here. I have always had trouble uh, getting these oil pan gaskets to seal properly. Uh, basically the same engine in my old 47 Plymouth back in high school. Uh, had a heck of a time getting it to stop leaking. Um, it's a little tricky and I'm trying two or three different ways of doing this. Uh, gasket set is relatively cheap. Uh, so you can try different things. Uh, you're only going to see what works. So um, you saw me getting the holes down to where everything's level. Um, because when you over tighten the bolts, it, it tends to pull up on, on the edges here and, and it, it won't seal. So that should be flat. Now, the next thing I'm going to do... is put these pieces in and without the side pieces I'm going to put that up into the engine because what that does that crushes down because um, you're supposed to leave a little bit above there and they crush down to size and then I'm going to take the side pieces and put them on the block first. Uh, you notice this is different from this end. This end goes up against, um, there's a ridge, I believe it's on the front, uh, that squishes down into this and if you try to get this on there, it won't seat properly with with this with this piece in there. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put these up onto the block first, and um, well, no, I'm going to put these in here, get that squished in, and I'm going to take the pan off, put this on the block, and then put the whole pan on. And hopefully that should seat and seal correctly. Yeah, you'll find out or not if this doesn't this work. This time I am trying this Permatex Right Stuff 90 minute gasket maker. Um, with the, uh, the old black stuff, you're supposed to wait 24 hours and there's controversy on that. Um, some people say you don't have to, some people say you do. Um, so I'm going to try this and um, see what it does. Um, but uh, yeah, let's try this. So I guess we're successful. Uh, I went out and drove it about five miles and uh, tightened up a couple bolts and um, looks like it's not dripping. Um, and um, I'm happy with that. Thank <laughs> you.